Thank you very much, Mrs. Romay, Mr. Koch. Thank you very much for the invitation, Herman. Um, being one of the last speakers, I could say everybody said it, but I haven't said it, so I will not read it, however, what was said. Um, I am a representative of a research program, so I will take a research perspective on ITS. First, as a research program in the European Union, we have double roles. The first one certainly is competitiveness of our industry, how to support it. And it is not by accident that the automotive sector was very much targeted at the Green Car Initiative in the recovery package. Now, from a research viewpoint, what we believe is that this industry is undergoing a revolution. Already now, I mean, you can see that you have new players, you can see that you have players <laughs> disappearing. On top of that, you have a technical revolution, which is the electromobility. And it's not to be taken for granted that the actors today will be the actors tomorrow. It may well be like in the telecom industry. You will have incumbents and you have new players. And the union will find new regulation to harmonize all that, maybe. Now, the second objective is solving societal needs. In particular, safety. And increasingly more important is energy saving. And the good thing about transport is competitiveness and these societal goals are not conflicting. They bring business. They will bring new products. And even in some cases, regulation would help in pushing innovation, in entering new markets. So this is the good news for ITS. Now, what are we doing in terms of research topics? I think one is really to strongly support our industry. We have world leaders in the components. We have the Infineon ST companies on nanoelectronics, on embedded software. We have among the best suppliers for the car industry in Europe, the biggest, the more profitable also. And we need to maintain this leadership. Clearly, we need to support this sector which is, in fact, bringing a lot of employment in Europe, and what we forget, still a lot of manufacturing in Europe. <coughs> but the world is changing also. At the same time, we know that Asia, China, will become our new competitors, including in electromobility. The best technologies on batteries are in Asia at the moment. They were brought by a totally different sector by the uh, PC sector. We have been out of that game. We have not <coughs> anticipated. And now the enormous amount of investment we have in Europe to rebuild uh, our capabilities in batteries is a major challenge. Will we succeed? So again, here we need to support also our research to be more innovative and also to be ready for the next generation of batteries. Now, technology is in one side, but there is another aspect of technology which is difficult to support through a research program, which is the service <coughs> industry. And the connected car will bring a series of new services. I mean, in our ICT jargon, we say the car will become part of the Internet of Things. Things are connected. The car will be connected. New services will be brought. We have some aspects already nearly there, like e-call, emergency calls, which is already one service. And we see the difficulties to bring in really uh, 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 mandatory in Europe to be the first. But this is one element. But the same platform supporting e-call will support many other services and this will bring new businesses. Also, in terms of service, as uh, previous speakers have highlighted, you may not buy a car anymore. You may buy mobility services. 
And in fact, the way you sell a car may be totally different. And we all know that in business, the one who is closer to the customer usually are the ones making money. And services, if you sell a mobility, I mean, maybe you will have new value chain there. So just to say that for us, we are in the ICT program, we have these two aspects, the basic technologies, nanoelectronics, microsystems, embedded software, and the other aspect, increasingly important, <coughs> is supporting the service industry. And it means a lot of technology there also. A service platform has to be developed. I mean, we know that on the internet, the service platforms have been developed in the US. The Googles of this world are in the US. Now, if you think about supporting the services in Europe, we need also to have the service platforms. And this requires a lot of research. Now, one point which is difficult also from our perspective in the Union is why do we do that at European level? We know that in electromobility, there are a lot of strong national programs. So what has to be done at European level in an area where it is so competitive? Of course, standards. Of course, interoperability. And we hope that, just to make an example, to reload your car, we will have plugs and sockets which are harmonized, not as we have at the moment, for electricity and also what up to recently we had for our mobiles. I mean, to reload your mobiles, you need hundreds of plugs. <coughs> Hopefully now, it's only one standard. Now, this is for uh, the standards. But now for the technology, I spoke about batteries. This is very national at the moment. What has to be done at European level? And for us, it's extremely difficult. I mean, it is already extremely difficult to put around the same table all those responsible for the research programs at national level. And this is a challenge. If we go very fragmented, we will not succeed. I mean, we know first that the automotive sector is a, a global business. It's not a national business. So de facto, there is a national, a international dimension. The other aspect, just to conclude, is what also we are doing in terms of cooperation with the US. Because again, I mean, the solutions we have in Europe should also be solutions you have worldwide. So cooperation with the US on standards to try to define the same standards, the same norms, and with Japan, and maybe with other countries worldwide is a must. And we put a lot of efforts here. And just to conclude, I think we need your strong support to promote uh, this uh, uh, sector. I think, uh, 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 of course, we say the best way to save energy in the transport sector is not to have cars anymore. And okay, it may also be to have no industry. I mean, what I think, but this is something that, this is an image we need to correct. I mean, I think uh, in the US, uh, some said that the American way of living is not negotiable. I think I would not say the same in Europe, but there is a certain truth there. I mean, we need to find the right balance between what is desirable, what is realistic, but also to ensure a future for our children. Thank you.